Hello and welcome back to another video and in this video we will continue our journey with Bucket and today we're actually gonna implement uh, password hashing and also connect it to our Postgres database. First of all we'll have to install some Maven dependencies so we will go to our pom.xml where we will uh, paste in Postgres SQL this version um, and then we will also want to paste in this codec uh, dependency. You can also install dependencies very easily by going to by running the command uh, maven add dependencies and searching for the dependency and then installing it that way. Anyway, this one the Apache Apache common uh, will be used for or codec will be used for password hashing. So this is the line that will uh, do the password hashing. Uh, we're basically just converting a password to, or actually we're encrypting or hashing a password to uh, SHA-256. Um, and yeah, so basically what that, wants, that does is it turns your password into something just unreadable. So we're actually gonna execute this um, this line after we have encrypted the password, uh, and then we're gonna update our password to be this. Uh, and now we should um, be able, if we um, if we rebuild our package and we reload our server. We should be able to register. And now you'll see that our password, which was just 123, is replaced with this random string. And actually, another thing that we can do is add a salt. A salt makes it harder to crack by just adding some weird things behind it. It's uh, You can look into more password hashing if that interests you but I'm not gonna go like further in depth on the best patterns so I'm just gonna make it very easy to me uh, just put in some random oops <laughs> yeah I smashed my keyboard a little bit too hard so we're gonna just put in some random uh, characters and like so and then we'll do some of these and question mark maybe yeah <coughs> Sorry. Um, so now uh, we will save it and this is now our hashed password. Keep in mind that we will have to use uh, the same algorithm with the same uh, salt and everything when we're logging in as well. So this is really important to keep in mind. Anyway. Now we actually want to update our password in our database. So I've already gone ahead and created the database. Um, I assume you have the knowledge of basic SQL. Uh, then you know how to create a database. You also know how to create a table. And um, yeah, so we're gonna have a table called players or player. Inside this table, I want to have a couple of things. I want to have the UID, and some other properties which is not relevant for this tutorial uh, but mainly i want mainly i want to focus on the name uh, the player name and the uid so we're going to add another field here uh, to your or create a table if you haven't created a table and then we're going to have it be a password and this can be a bar char of um yeah i'm not sure how long it could be Bucket. Let's do 500. I'm not sure. Five, five total. Let's see. I'm not sure. Then we can save this. And I'm using a database software called Navicat, but you can use whatever program that you choose. Just be sure to add the field for the password. Because right now we're gonna actually interact with our database. And this will be kind of tricky. There are like a ton of ways to do it. I'm not sure if it's the best way, but it's the way that I uh, that I prefer um, using it. So I really like creating a SQL helper. 
I'll call it SQL helper helper.java and we're just going to create the basic class and we want to um, make the constructor function uh, we want that to take in a connection to the database we're going to name like that there we go and then we might want to import the connection and this should be imported from java.sql there we go uh, we now want to create a private uh, connection called connection and now we will set this dot connection to the connection that we passed into our initializer pretty easy pretty easy so now what we might want to do is add a query helper or a way to uh, like query our database so we're going to do public and this will return a result set which is basically a result of of the data that you query uh, we're gonna pass in a query string and a ton of arguments which can be pretty much whatever and there we go uh, we will also add here that it will throw an SQL exception um, and yeah so now we want to create a prepared statement which is basically a, um, it's basically the query that you want to execute so this will be we'll call it prepared statement and it will be uh, and it will be set to connection dot prepare statements and we want to prepare the statement with the query that we uh, we passed into this function then um, we want to loop through each of our um, arguments that we have and we want to add them to the statement and this can be done by a simple for i loop um, yeah or a simple for loop then we want the prepared statement to execute so we'll do execute query and then we'll finally return the result set of that query it's a bit complicated, but I hopefully you have followed along. We're also going to do pretty much the same, but for uh, updating. But we will call this uh, update, and it will be a void instead of a result set, because an update statement doesn't return anything. So then we're going to do everything as follows, but we're just going to do... Um, we're going to do execute update instead but this part will pretty much be the same yeah um so when we now come back to our plugin um what we then want to create is um we want to create our connection so we're actually inside here we're going to create a private actually it can be public uh, public connection java sql and then we'll name it connection just make sure to import it as well oops okay there we go and now we want uh, we want to actually start up our postgres drivers um, or we want to connect to our postgres database so we're going to go into, we're going to use the driver manager and then we want to uh, register the device as follows and inside the register device function uh, we or method we're going to create a new driver which we will import to, this is important, the postgres driver dot driver and that's yeah Let's see, it gives us an error, unhandled. Yeah, we can surround it with a try catch. Why not? Um, then we'll see what it suggests. Yeah, fail to register post aggressive oh, postgres driver. Um, yeah, it's fine. 
So after that, we want to uh, update our connection and we want to get our connection to the database. So here we could hard code it, but obviously hard coding stuff is not um, the perfect uh, solution always. So instead, uh, we will actually, instead of hard coding it, we will actually pass it into as a config. So we're going to create a config dot yml file inside our config.yml we want the database uh, credentials so i've already got mine posted but mine copied but just make sure that you have an ip port username password and database and this will be set to the values of your database of course uh, what we then can do is actually uh, update this so instead of all of this shit uh, we can um, we can use the config files and so now we, we will have to load our config somehow that's why we want to create a config uh, void so we are going to create a new function or new method called load config uh, which copy the default config if there isn't any uh, we're going to save the config and then we're going to load the config and we're going to load this config into a config variable which we will call um, a config it will be of type bucket.configuration which is called config so now we have a config uh, variable which we can use which is uh, great and then of course we'll have to load the config on enabled and we can do that first of all because we want to make sure that our config is up to date so now we want to basically just use all of our uh, all of uh, we want to use all of the uh, the config variables so we will do that by accessing config.getString for getting strings, config.getInt for getting integers, integers, and then again config.getString for getting strings. And make sure that this string type is equals unspecified um, and also that you have the correct formatting. I will also be putting this command in the description so you can just fast uh, paste it or copy it. So now we have hopefully uh, gotten our uh, connection going so this means uh, that we're actually yeah it's uh, it's great news great news so what we then can do uh, is that in our command handler where we want to use uh, the database we can actually pass uh, we can actually pass the connection. So if we go down to the get command, uh, the execution register, we can uh, actually, we will have to run this command uh, once it is done connecting to the database. Let's see, yeah. So let me just make some space. And in the new command handler, when we're creating the new instance of the class, uh, we are going to have a, we are going to pass in the connection. So we're going to do connection, connection. We are going to pass in the connection to the database, and then we will create a new, a private um, variable called S, uh, a private SQL helper called SQL helper and inside our constructor function uh, we will assign uh, the SQL helper like this uh, so once it is assigned we can actually use it and we have an error here inside the plugin.java and that's because we are not passing the connection so we'll just pass in the connection and remember we set the connection up here at line 27 so yeah should be good to go. Um, so, yeah, let's try to update 
something in the database. Let's try to add the password to that particular user. And now we have, yeah, uh, I mean, GitHub Copilot is just so good. Anyway, we are going to do a try catch and we will catch the SQL exception error. Um, like this, there we go. And we're going to do like that and we're going to import it. Uh, whatever we will it will complain and it will auto correct it i mean i'm just gonna do it the easiest way um let's go with sql helper and then we want to we want to update something right we want to uh, update the password so we are gonna update the um we're gonna update the user table so first of all we'll have to create an sql statement and we will do that by doing a string and then update password SQL. And here we're going to do update player set password equals and then question mark if we are passing a variable to that uh, part of the SQL statement. And then where due ID because it's important to not go off uh, names since names in Minecraft can change, but due ID. IDs uh, stay the same. Um, so, yeah. And now we can pass the update password as the SQL statement or SQL query. And then we can create, we can pass um, password as the first parameter and get unique string as the uh, as the other parameter. But here's the thing, it will um, complain uh, because we have to surround it with a try catch. And then if something goes wrong, we can do, uh, we can actually send that back to the player. We can say send message, uh, could, and we will do that in red, I believe a C, yeah, could, Fail to register your account. Uh, try again later, even though later won't probably work either. <laughs> anyway, um, I've been trying to speed run this, but it's uh, it's taking a while. Seventeen minutes. Okay, let's do this. So this will won't return anything, but I mean, if it doesn't throw an error, you successfully register your account and. It will say, uh, you can now sign in into our sign on into our website. There we go, and um, yeah, I think this should be about it. Um, so let's try it. Let's package it and let's. Um, move it in, drag it into our plugins folder. We're going to reload our server. And then let's see, this is the moment of truth. Probably won't work. Oh, it did. You can now sign in to our website, successfully registered your account. Great. Um, so if we now go onto our database, we should see the password is set and it's encrypted as well. So yeah, that's kind of how you can interact uh, with the database or Postgres database uh, from your uh, Minecraft plugin. And um, so like the possibilities are truly endless here. You can do pretty much whatever you want. If you want to interact with the database asynchronously, there is a different path you can take, uh, but that will be a topic of another video. But anyway, thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in the next series.